your builder is still going to be shooting for that, that 360. Right. Or whatever area. But the, I, I guess my only point was I want to be able to build a house that is as good or superior to theirs. Right. right? right. That's the, the, that's you, you yeah, don't yeah, want to yeah. look at that way. You don't want to build a house that's superior to something like a three hundred sixty thousand dollar. You want to build a house that's good enough for somebody that's making twelve bucks an hour in order to start their future. Why? Why do you think they deserve a house as good as the other? Well, this cost. specifically cost. Yeah. Cost. So well, they don't I, need no, no, no. I, 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 I'm talking. About, I'm not talking about putting Viking You're not ranges talking about in there. Like I'm talking about quality. a house that is as good yeah. as quality as anybody yeah, else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know. And that has to be. That has to be the focus. Right, but, uh, but but yeah, exactly. So the thing is, like, you have. To, I think that two things. One is a lot of the cost of the 350 does not go into materials. So meaning, the house that they build does not necessarily have more studs or is stronger or right. better than what you could build for a lot less because you're not paying the fees and the HOAs and you're not fighting city hall and raising hands, whatever. Um, but it's. I think it's also important to be flexible. Mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that, say, someone who's really, really poor and they cannot afford the best house that you can build them, even though it's still, it's like, say, it's 200k, they only have 100k. Can we, okay, there is an architect who is called Alejandro Aravena, and he came up with a concept of incremental housing. Because he had this issue, like, why do we build shitty houses for poor people, right? Small and bad. Why do we do that? Like, it's it's terrible. Like, would you live in it? No. So why did you build it for other people? So he came up with a concept of half a good house. If you can only have half, you you get a smaller house, and it's good, but it's great. It's expendable, and that's why we came. We also working with the expendable situation, which is you don't start out with something weak. You start out with something, or you start out with something that can be kitted, right? Like, okay, you know, maybe you start out with concrete floor, but you can put hardwood floor in this in for, in two years when you have the money because it's prepared for that. So I think it's more like having that flexibility of not saying, okay, you either get the really good stuff or nothing. Right, and I mean, I know a lot of yeah. it's wrapped up granite and cabinets that are custom yeah, made, Viking right. stoves, all of the bullshit. Right. That that is gone, and we're just making the best absolute dwellings here, you know. Right. And, and you do it in a way that if you want to have the all of that stuff, you can add it later. Yeah, yeah, that's it's true. Right, that's the house will take it. Yeah. 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 Sorry, um, we hijacked the... <laughs> um, sure. What about the movie for disaster relief? Mm. That's a tricky one, mm. for two reasons. One is like, one of the things that most people hear from the rest is like, a lot of the housing that's supposedly temporary ends up being for years. People end up living in it for years. I mean, it's, it's, it's a permanent home. So, uh, but, but, but what I mean is the, the advantage is that with uh, volunteers, a large group of volunteers, you could actually put up one of these houses in, say, five days, mm -hmm. you know, to afford disaster. Yeah. Uh, Not so much special relief as in rebuilding after a disaster. Because usually, usually that's a temporary housing, right? You're not thinking temporary, you're thinking permanent or temporary? Thinking like rebuilding. Rebuilding, right, right, yes, yes. That's definitely something. Yeah, I Rebuild. think it's a really nice market. So, yeah. And, then, and then we could go there, but I don't think that's our objective. I mean, I think it's great. We could just send semi-trucks of a thousand modules and then just say, yeah. hey, boys, they're on their way, and then, but yeah. they would, it would be the, the permanence, it wouldn't be the, the temporary. Right. You know, the, a tornado hits, goes through, but yeah. okay, there's two trucks on its way with, you know, 25. If we have a thousand people capable of building this, say there's a disaster, yeah. get those thousand entrepreneurs we can rebuild an, an to the next day, yeah. ship a thousand houses. You can't do that through centralized operations. Logistics are too hard. You can you can do that through a distributed operation. Yeah. So there's actually yeah, exactly. an opportunity yeah. there. Yeah. What are some of the like you mentioned? You know, building a home as an appliance, or like having you know, a greenhouse integrated with the home. What do you have any other ideas for like other appliances, like heat your food? Like, is there something else? Yeah. Yeah, but beyond like food and, and housing. It's yeah, energy it's production, good. treat your own waste, uh, water catchment. See, these are, would be the three, by, by death or something like that. Uh, 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 
Yeah, micro factory and uh, um, yeah. So waste treatment, isn't that water mm -hmm. catchment and treatment? So I, mean, I read once that like housing is kind of like an extension of the human body or skin. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think about it in the way too. Well, this um, just I guess maybe in a more specific way. <laughs> uh, so, um, regarding the concept of a replicable housing enterprise, uh, you think do you, do you people think that um, this could do it? Like, if we try to define this package that does it, are we on the right track? Or should we be even doing something else? I mean, it's a question worth worth asking. We say we study industry standards, what works for the concept of solving housing. So you got to start with asking, what is solving housing? That means to provide affordable housing to people in all kinds of contexts. That's a big question. No, we can, we can talk about, about the parts that we haven't quite worked out. Go ahead. <laughs> OK. Lighter materials. Lighter materials? One of the concepts I like about, uh, about uh, the, the, the way the standard works and how um, like uh, a judge that can be from four inches apart and like us we're doing it like every six inches kind of. Do you remember what? Oh, yeah, so if, if you didn't do it as a module, that you only need to put a, a, yeah. a, a load-bearing wall, uh, either it needs like a 2 by 6 every 24 inches. Mm -hmm. But then with our system, we're doing one on every side. Yeah, exactly. So then we ended up having two load-bearing studs right next to one another, mm -hmm. where like the traditional system, you would only do one. Yeah, I think like, that's, that's one, of the, one of the concepts and ideas that can put me, uh, contribute a lot for the design, you know, because if we're having two things that one uh, beside the other, although there are two different uh, modules, maybe we could design something that can have the same uh, weight uh, capacity but as one, but in two sides, this kind of thing. Yeah. You, you could 3D print half of one if we can 3D print. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, well, okay, so for one thing, I just wanted to say, like, I, materials is something I, I'm really, really interested in. I think that materials, like the development of new materials is critical for recycling plastic, for making houses, you know, easy to build and all of that. But I think that we always have to think, and this always comes up, because people have great ideas for materials and really think things different. The thing is, we have to work in two tracks, because the reality is that between one material being developed and it being massively adopted in the construction industry, there's at least 10 years, minimum, right? Like architects will tell me they will not work with a material or a builder that is less than 10 years old because of the liability. Because you don't know how it's going to behave once it hits a hurricane or a heat or... So we're talking about uh, two different scales. One scale is like, let's help people right now on one track, and the other track is like, take money that we make doing that and spend it developing materials that are they're only going to really possibly be massively adopted in five to ten years if we're super optimistic. So I think that has to be that kind of like double. Otherwise, I don't know, I feel that in ten years, shit is going to have hit the fan by then. <laughs> I don't mean the world ending or anything, but like things getting complicated uh, in, 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 in diverse areas of life. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I really feel like we got to do it. We, we, there's this girl who came visit us uh, uh, a, f a few weeks ago, and she has this great idea for 3D printed houses. But even though I sat with her, and she's like, oh, I feel, I feel this urgency, I think that she also knew that we're talking about years. Uh, she can build 10 now, but before she has built thousands, it will be 10 years, like no less than that. So again, like that's why there's so many of us, so we can work on two tracks, I think. Um, and then um. Um, when businesses, <clears throat> so one of the key components is when businesses are, are beginning that are outside of the OSC system and are on uh, forked tracks, uh, what is going to be the uh, model to help give back into the thing? Will it just be sending people to training? Will there be something, um, I'm not saying more expected, but uh, 
what is your guys' vision for that? How the external world is absorbed or contributes how to this world? How other companies are connected, other organizations how, yeah, are connected Yeah, how to other organizations how, how are, are connected back to How do we interact with other organizations? Well, like, you know, Anthony um, starts an organization, how, what is the... Well, the open source bias states that if we've got a good kernel, then they will con start contributing to it, just like Microsoft now is the number one contributor to to the Linux kernel. Uh, people will start adopting if it works. The, ki the key is, is it going to be working? Are we getting enough bodies to show up to develop and coordinate effort? If we solve that, then people will, would want to come to this because it's got value. It's just a simple thing. And uh, there's a happy correlation. And, and and we're not trying to threaten them that, oh, yeah, this is going to take over. It's just I like we're going to be innovating. Yeah. I absolutely plan to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then you're going to piss them off. So so you want to be, that would not meet our specification of collaborative design for a transparent and inclusive economy of abundance. It includes all those bitches as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's right, like you got to be nice because it's also like if you're going to try to, try to make some change uh, you gotta like I thought about this like I thought about like getting taken out or whatever because I think that some ideas could be very powerful but mm -hmm. no no I don't have to fear that if I'm I adopt a mindset of inclusive so that's a that's a kind of a mind shift but I think it's very helpful because I'm gonna say oh cool man um, join us or you know let's collaborate you can just totally s shift that dynamic so it's about really this complete cultural creation on all fronts man that's uh that's what we got to do yeah i think like construction wise one of the areas that i want to look into more is actual construction of the modules and tightening the tolerances um, oh yeah oh yeah we CNC, can do that like cnc with some of the uh like the window ocd uh panels for example i think would be a, like a really cool application of that um 3D printed uh, jigs you've talked about. Yeah. Jigs. Yeah. There's plenty, the jigs plenty on technical were, front. Because the CNC already sets uh, the, a barrier up here. You right. have to have one. And that's why we've avoided, like, you've got to use a miter saw and a drill. And you could, in theory, could build a house with that. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. from like, the enterprise track perspective, like, I lean more toward the, the second, longer term track as opposed to the. Mm. You know, someone downloads, you know, gets a CD and then goes completely off, off grid on their own. Because um, we see, like, the enterprise, like, we, we would have access to capital, we'd have enough capital to buy, or, you know, get the CNC machines, mm. get a decent 3D printer, or build one of the ones based on a uh, VOC design. Um, but I think that is going to be a more pragmatic approach, as I see it, going forward, mm. if you want to make it economic at scale. Mm. I, I disagree yeah. a little bit. I think making forms that are in the main four module types that are pre-made that people can just set the wood on and they're ready. Yeah. You know, you just set the wood on and it's right the right width. You set the wood on and it's the right depth. Right. And then you're just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and it all will already provide yeah, some type of stability for it. Yeah. The yeah. actual implementation detail obviously yeah. can, can change. I just think yeah. that's like an area where um, we should put more more R&D and more attention. Mm. Um, and it's a tricky chicken egg problem too, because I know we're still obviously prototyping the different modules. Right. That's what's like. That's what yeah. we just. This is this is the first time that we say, okay, th we are happy with these modules. Right. Mm -hmm. Sufficiently happy. That doesn't mean that it's done. It's mm -hmm. like okay now, because you'll see that every th of the three houses in this prototypes that were framed, all the modules are different because we keep trying different. Styles. So now, now it's time to do, you know, what you guys are saying, which is like, okay, now if this is how it more or less is, let's really refine it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. someone wants to start the enterprise model. Yeah. Like they need, they, they need and want replicability at scale. I yeah. think the jigs and all that supporting infrastructure is definitely going to that as I see it. Yeah. Oh, is that what a jig is? Is like a, a a hard piece that is in this shape? Yeah, like a guy. Okay. That, I mean, you yeah, can yeah, take whatever yeah. form, yeah. you know. You, Right. And, and also, like, I think that it will also be that, you know, right now we're working in a workshop that is multi-purpose, right? If you have a workshop that only does this, everything mm -hmm. is set up just right. right. Mm -hmm. The tools are where they need to be. Mm -hmm. You have your stops, you have your story sticks, everything is just... Right, yeah. yeah. You can either get, like, a, uh, like a wood master is a... Uh, like the, the pinnacle of a, a wood working here, but it's like $5,000. 
And with that, you have stops built right up to the thing that make it super easy to make all these cuts, super clean, no error. But how do we master. build one? How do we build a wood master? <laughs> <laughs> How much did you say it cost? Uh, I believe it's five thousand. I've only seen five thousand dollars. Yeah, so I've only seen well, that place, not bad. Uh, people that if it use does them. everything you need in your business, that is not. I, I thought you said fifty. I, I mean, I registered fifty because I didn't want to believe there was only five. Five is an acceptable thing. Oh, oh, don't quote me on the price. I've only seen them in places yeah. where it's like people. I'm gonna go there. It's like, hey, Maddie said it was five thousand. I'm not gonna give a dollar over that. Don't. Are you telling me that lied to me? <laughs> Yeah, or you can you can build it, right? I mean, you can make story sticks and stops, and you can make all the jigs, you know. A uh, question I'm not uh, practically interested in, but is there an upper limit to how many floors you could do with these models? Three. Three. So three is possible. Yeah. Is, is it because it's only two? Uh, you can't do more than three floors out of wood anymore. Pretty much yeah. every place requires okay. so you need to do that out of steel. So there's no advantage of having more studs along the way, even the uh, we've, we've, yeah, I mean, we've seen, no, three mm -hmm. is pretty much, I, I, yeah, that, that building that we saw the other day, there was stick frame that were a bit shocked, there was stick frame, how, how tall was it? I forget, but I thought we saw something that was more than three, but it might have had, like, it steel It might have studs. had steel in the first floor and then wood in the top, but three is more or less what, yeah. To start with a bunch of containers, okay. <laughs> 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 Open source containers. <laughs> Can't get those anymore. Okay, so uh, the next step now is um, what I'm going to be working on, like the very next baby step, is all the construction details for this. Um, like blueprints? Yeah. Oh, okay. So the, the complete CAD revised with what we learned, and then, you know, all the details, like the flashing, everything. Um, because we, cha we had that for the previous model, but we don't yet have it with this model. Um, some things that we were kind of like, the roof is something that has come up as, um, optimization documents, yeah. uh, quality control documents. Next step I see is the 3D printing. If we do the 3D printing, we can potentially get lower cost modules too, that are auto made, right. yeah. So much. I mean, one thing I would say, like, if, say, say we're just thinking that our timeline is just the next build, right? And so yeah, that's December. Like oh, specifically, like, right here, right now. Uh, yes. Yeah, right. Right. I, I think it will be uh, really like refining the documentation so it's like less ambiguous and clearer, and refining processes, build processes in, in those jigs that you're talking about. And just think, okay, this was confusing, or this was hard to do, what we do instead. They're, um, on the front end, um, safety and basic carpentry skills should be like gone over with um, people before they get in the shop to because there were some. I'm just saying just for their own safety. Right. Um, some people don't know. Yeah. You know, it just for safety purposes. Like, um, there's. Some we did go through that in the workshop setting, but not in the assembly setting. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, maybe. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, oh, maybe. You, were you not there? Maybe I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's all I was just saying. Right. Just like um, how to cut within with a miter saw is a, is we a big one. We did that. Yeah. Okay. We did that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you weren't there. Yeah. We did do that. Like how to measure and mark how to cut on the side. Like right. all the safety of not having any hair or anything and like, you know, being pulled towards But yeah, we did all of that. And glasses and gloves and things like that. You weren't there either. <laughs> Everyone. Oh, okay, so how the cut. Her, but I, I oh, maybe, maybe you weren't there. Yeah. I remember that not everyone was there. We're trying to get people to come in, but I think there was a it was a bit spread out. Um, I'm sorry, we kind of hijacked your. Um, no, no. Uh, so I mean, my question would be like, what's what's useful to get out of the, these um, the enterprise sessions? Is it something that I mean, the idea was to refine, actually get on working docs and and refine, you know, actually get 
move progress like what we're asking right now like document it make it accessible uh, is that something we can do uh, on the enterprise front like actually generating collaborative assets like like even things like what I asked before was about like even website or marketing materials and um, so there's manufacturing there's product product we're working on there's distribution there's uh, marketing. marketing there's also customer support uh, does that lend itself to like for example like Anthony if you're gonna set up your enterprise or Lance I mean whatever other people are doing is there stuff that we can actually collaborate on generating uh, is that is that feasible uh, or also like like within FreeCAD we talked about to actually do designers where you can do so say we refine okay here's our first model here is Rosebud but there's tons of models we can do so designers within Sweet Home or FreeCAD uh, you know that kind of stuff uh, that that relates to enterprise or just looking at the numbers like what are the you know one one big question is what's uh what are some very explicit business models there's just summaries like business um revenue models like yeah. i mentioned the one the 100k package well that's one version but what are how can we develop right. and test very specific other things that we can do that are all kinds of derivatives of this um and, and the one thing i, I was actually going to say then we started talking about materials we talked about a little bit about the ideas we had for the businesses but then there's the, the, the uh, questions we have not been able to answer satisfactorily which is Okay, so someone who can, who has a hundred thousand dollars, or can get a hundred thousand dollars, could get one of these. But what about the people who don't even have a thousand dollars, and they can't get a loan, and their lot is in a bad part of the city, so there's no way, even if they already have a lot, there's no way they can get a loan because it's in a bad part of the city. So we haven't. Those are the people we want to address the most, but we don't have a way yet to make it happen. They are. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Even people who experience food insecurity, and I don't know how we help them. Well, uh, I so um, I'm thinking that so you got the 25 percent that's likely going to go back to the business. My thing is uh, one of the marketing things is going to be some part of your house is going to actually go to that because part part of the marketing, but you just you you stipulate basically it's going to be the rich paying for these houses right? right so my revenue model is I'm not actually going to be in that 150 range for my for the CD go home that I'd be buying for like mid-tier clients in order to pull some of that revenue for those types of um, events or to invest back into the right. OSC tech um, you know component but, but so. even assuming you have the money you still have mm -hmm. to work out the social aspects so say you have the money and you have mm -hmm. a poor person giving a house mm -hmm. to someone in general doesn't work very well mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. have to have some kind of stake in it they have to have some sense of ownership mm -hmm. uh, one model people have been using is the rent to own where you pay very little rent uh, and you set the price of that but they still pay something or they build for it or they say they, they help you build five houses but that's kind of like because that that that's the, the, the charity model is... I'm not talking about charity. Right, and, right, and right. I mean, we're all so building much. this. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the, these homes are about building yourself. Right. right. But, it, uh, yeah, but the I, working out the specifics right. of how do we actually make this work in a way that, first of all, it's not going to turn into a crack house like a month later. But if it does, it'll be the best crack house yeah. on the right. block. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, 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 it'll be the best built crack house on the block. <laughs> I would argue by creating any housing whatsoever, you're increasing the supply. And by doing that, you're going to reduce the pressure. Uh, like, so if we're making oh, a house. Okay. These people are going to leave that house. So yeah. now that house is available. And now, so this is a thousand square foot, which is basically a two bedroom, two bath. Right. Mm -hmm. So now some of those old people would be open to having roommates. So may just want to live by themselves entirely. But one way or another, they vacated at some other place that now is available. So, mm -hmm. the, you, you, without doing anything directly, you would directly be affecting the ability of like low income or homeless people to find housing. Yeah, and I mean that's the big thing is trying to compete to bring down prices in general for everybody. Hopefully, right. in our in my wildest dreams. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. A good, a good yeah. Tip. yeah. I, I, I kind of like the uh, financing part, right? I, I think Brian put that uh, aspect I think in one of the first sessions mm. about um, talk to different small banks or people that uh, <laughs> give loans or finance certain yeah. projects to uh, low income uh, population. Yeah. Low income population and I feel that that's uh, something that is very powerful because you're giving them the possibility of getting this house and at the same time uh, being able to work there or help and um, have the the possibility of getting something like uh, something valuable. So yeah. I think that's 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 super important. So maybe like bringing alliances. But I think that's that's very hard because banks in general are not open source. Right. Mm. So like how how could we create a system in which we can have the capital so we can finance certain projects and certain kind of expect mm. uh, a return? Well, Habitat for Humanity does that already, don't they? So there is an example. Habitat is mm -hmm. great. They're exploding yeah. right now. They require 400 hours of sweat equity if you're going to get their house. Yeah. So their no house banks. They, they get the money. Sweat equity. Sweat equity. But yeah. they involve a bank for the loan, and that loan is about but the, 100. Oh, the loan gets through K. them. Not, it's not for the person, right? Uh, I'm not sure what mm. the mechanics are, but there's a bank partner involved that provides the money that the people pay the bank because we don't want to become rent collectors that's right. a different job <laughs> so some kind of a an arrangement with a bank so if so I was told so my mentor said here's the deal get yourself land if you can afford the price of land which is maybe three thousand like in Kansas City you can get a bunch of lots that are like starting at one thousand five hundred Kansas City right now go to the Kansas City Land Trust um, yeah they have that so you get that money for that house can a bank actually loan you money on that because you have that capital if we can make friendly relationships with banks that could be able to do that that would be a great step somehow we would have to get enough rapport or enough reputation to say that you know we can maybe like bail out the person that fails or something or I don't know, have some kind of reserves that we can do that. But somehow we have to pro either collaborate with some kind of a bank or be that bank ourselves, like maybe by well, charging yeah, I, I, rich people I, what more. I would, sorry. Uh, what I would say is if the product is superior, the money will be there. Do not worry about that. If the product is superior, and that means both at its price point and both in its quality point, yeah, they, the, the money like will be that. there. I like the thinking. Yeah, that's how you the money think. will be there. Just focus on the product; the money will come. Yeah. But, but okay, it's one other thing, in addition to banks and loans, that we all need to learn more about, and anyone who is is like zoning and homeowners association and don't right. deal with them. Right, 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 right. So that's 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 what I that's what I believe too. Yeah, like, don't deal don't, with don't them. Don't go there. Like, They're don't not pay open their source. prices. Don't get into it. Don't sign any contract. Just if, if this is too restrictive, walk away. The problem is those are the desirable zones, and those are the zones with the good schools, and the good stores, and the good jobs. So we're, uh, so we're, ha we're having to basically do two th one of two things, either going to the worst neighborhoods and then create those resources. We don't just build yeah. one house, we build the school too, because you know, mm -hmm. who wants to live there if the school yeah, does a shootout in it every day, right? Um, so we have to in the park. So you, you have to think like more like the the whole the neighborhood block. approach, right? The yeah, trees yeah. and things like that. And then another possibility that we talked about is we build outside the cities, outside the suburbs. So like or, where it's really cheap, where you can get a thousand acres and start developing or something. But then that has to come with jobs. So then we have to also be the job provider. So maybe that's where you get your employees for your construction business is. Mm -hmm. There's this package, you know, it's not like a cult or anything. <laughs> People are free to come and work for someone else or just buy a house. But where there's that opportunity of, I come from a, an industrial town that was founded by one guy around one factory. And mm -hmm. the entire town lived off of that, right? So it was like a, you know, a factory town. 
and there are still towns like that. So that works to some, ex some extent, especially if it's not centralized. If your business is not the only one, if then there's someone who also does websites, if basically the jobs come with the houses and then you're no longer having to move into the HOAs areas and the zoning areas. And so you can find, like, essentially any town that has the, uh, has suffered the, the, the blight of the right. blue collar, find an abandoned warehouse factory, yeah. mm -hmm. get that first, start building the things, yeah. start building yeah. houses around, yeah. getting jobs, yeah. and then That'd expand cool. into exactly. the city itself. Exactly. I mean, in, in Kansas, you know, around here, you can even possibly even buy, like, you can possibly buy a warehouse for $1,000 or something because they're desperate for tax income. Yeah. Mm. So they'll almost give it to you for free. In some small towns, because everyone left, they have no tax, they have no way to support the community. They're just basically giving away lots, almost, for like a dollar or something. Uh, but this is all food for thought. <laughs> so. how, how does the gentrification happen? You know, you have a neighborhood, it's kind of poor, but the artists move in because it's all they can afford. Right. Because it attracted this nomadic group that eventually gets priced out. They somehow managed to create a desirable neighborhood for the next uh, wave of okay. wannabe buyers there. Right. So right. There's multiple generations to design for, whether it's just, okay, you buy your house and you live there forever, maybe it's <coughs> a transient place where we have to work with the artists so they can make it right, 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 right. leave. Yeah, that's true, right. And the artists already have some way to make a living, usually like, and they can work remotely, so they're not as attached to a specific location where they have to go to well, a specific job. We're not controlling society, we're trying to build the best house. Right, it's just that in order to solve housing, it's not just we're talking to build the house, it's like we're trying to solve housing, so we need to create a product that does something to people, right? I mean, that actually solves their problems, otherwise it's just, it solves indirectly, like you guys were saying, they said that it brings the market, the prices down, but it's still, you're still a slave at the end of the day. If you still have to have a job that you hate to pay for the, th the house, the, the really nice house, but you know, um, so kind of like more thinking about those in integrated solutions, I think. And it's funny that you should mention gentrification, because I just read a really cool article, and I hope sometimes you read things and you go like, this sounds too good to, to, to be true, <laughs> but apparently, there is a town in Belgium that was terrible, like, it was the dirty, it had been de defined like as the dirtiest town in, in Belgium. They had like high rates of crime and high rates of unemployment. And this one mayor decided that, oh, and, and uh, it, it, was, it was like part Belgium and part like uh, Muslim immigrants. And there was a lot of like tension there. And apparently, a lot of the population once the you know joined like jihads, and it was bad. So this the, the basically what he decided was he was going to de-radicalize the town, and he created lots lots of strategies. I can send the article to the group. It was like a lot multiple strategies that he used. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that avoided the gentrification, so then he succeeded, apparently. I mean, according to this article, I would like to go and see it with my own eyes, because it sounds like really too good to be true. But um, And now, but one of the things that he avoided, the gentrification problem, in which now you have all of these people, you know, young and hip and whatever, and you're pushing out the poor, is that in Belgium, there is high rate of home ownership. So even the poor people own their home. So meaning the fact that the artist moved mm. next door did not price them up because they already paid out. You know, the mortgage didn't increase or anything. So maybe that's one way to also avoid that situation is to ensure that people, the, peop the low income people already own the house so they're, they can't be pushed out or something. Or if they are pushed out, they're given a lot of money and therefore they can buy something like that. Mm. So how did he do it? What did he do? Okay, so he did several, th it's like lots and lots and lots of little things. Okay. Uh, but, uh, so one of the things he did was, um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm trying to remember the examples, but folks, like one example was like everyone who moves into that town, especially people who are from abroad, is paired up with someone who already lives there okay. for six months. And every day, every week, they meet for coffee, and they tell them, this is how you open a bank account. This is how, you know, and then, so, so they're creating these relationships already between the, the, the current residents and someone who's coming new. So that already disarms like all the tension and all of that stuff. Um, other things that he was doing was, oh, I'm trying, uh, that, that one I, I got all stuck with me because it was so unusual. 
Yeah, read um, this. It's I put it on a wiki, so it's it's on a oh, page yeah, called I said it integration. To direct, yeah. Uh, first example, direct. I, I think it's not tab. behind the paywall, but if it is, I'm reading it right now. Know, know, but the thing is, um, okay. here's the deal. This is your standard. Uh, it's a wonderful life story. The, the idea yeah. that you know some yeah. agent in a given community yeah. cares true, and you create that exactly energy exactly. and you do it. That's kind of how we have to think, yeah. right? So, um, but that's the only solution. That's a deep solution because it means a lifetime of commitment. It's not something you do for a business plan in school, <laughs> uh, right. maybe. Uh, it's something that you commit your life to, and it's kind of how we think about this. It's like if we. If you meditate on this, you would, uh, like you'd say, okay, you know, life might be kind of crappy, but the only solution is like getting into those issues and you got to meet those issues head on. Like you can't run away. It's like the earth is getting smaller. So the only way is to go in it and um, try to solve it. But that's, yeah. that's kind of how we try and to approach having it. having a more it's holistic approach, which is what this guy had. He didn't just solve housing integrated uh, approach he, yeah he, he did a million little programs a million little things that some of them seem so small but when they're all put together mm -hmm. like this thing where everyone is paired up every new arrival is paired up with someone who tells you how to go from the bank account and go to the post office and well to his point um i would just like to say that if it's starting to um gentrify then that likely means that the program is working i mean that's just the unfortunate thing about our our system here in the United States is that um, that that usually happens when things like uh, nice housing and industry begin to move back in, you know, artists and, and yeah. So when we treat housing as a commodities market, the gentrification is like this terrible thing. If you're stuck, if you're not trying to make a bunch of money off of real estate, then gentrification is it, there's like always like this ebb and flow or this cycle as like a neighborhood rises up and then like falls and whatnot. It, and gentrification is like they're re re rising up. So then, if you're not poor, forcing out poor people, which if you're building houses that people are making 12 bucks an hour can afford, then you're not forcing those yeah. people out. Mm. You're actually empowering them and making them the force for gentrification, which then is is the, uh, I, in my opinion, I think the goal. So yeah. You just have to like, okay. separate it from it being a commodities market. Right. And that's what this guy did, which is he got all of these, he, he really wrote, like made these neighborhoods so much nicer and he got all of these people to move in, but people who lived there did not move out. So suddenly they went from having a really dirty neighborhood and feeling really dejected to if the, uh, some, now it's the, article, if the, the swing in, the, part, in like the, the children's playground doesn't work, they'll call up city hall because now they care, mm -hmm. right? Because they're like, no, no, it's nice, I like it, you know? Right. For example, one example in that in that story was force <laughs> force poor people it was to like 15 seconds of fame. <laughs> force not force but encourage the the feral migrants to go, no to to go to I'm a feral migrant from Poland. No no I didn't start out green. No, no, I'm a feral uh, migrant from uh, Poland. We joke he, about he that. Say, okay, yeah, you you missed the concept that he he claims that he's a feral migrant. Uh, yeah. So you have no manners, like I'm a feral migrant. <laughs> right. So um, encourage the people who are new to town to go to actually to the white kids' schools or the, the oh, natives, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and all the way that. around, go to the, the if you're a white guy, go to the bad neighborhood school, get some diversity training or stuff like that. Yeah. And they cool. did this by simply going to people's houses and persuading them to do it. There was no rule that they had to do it. It was like, oh, you have to have, like, he, he, the U.S. would be like, you have to have 15% exchange or something. No, they, they did it in a really personal way in which they sat down with the parents and they persuaded them to do this. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But we got to address, like, there's, so, so how do you get, like, if you go to Kansas City, you're going to see, like, true stab, oh, and, man. like, on one side, it's ghetto, other side, it's really nice. Yeah. It's like, holy cow, this very explicit division, how did that happen? Redlining. Well, it's all planned, it's redlining, uh, but also, so I googled, does redlining exist today? Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. So, so things like, can that person that you gets even, that... You can't even get a loan across the street. So like, let's say... here, but not there. Uh, uh, let's say you get a $2,000 lot... Does that actually play in in a subtle way like that you actually can get money because there's certain prejudice like It gets into those deeper questions, which don't have such easy solutions So it's kind of baked in and I don't know how you solve that I mean we can as OSC perhaps we can have a fund that helps people or something like that But I mean it's it's a whole systems issue. It's like yeah. 
got to improve the whole system to make this kind of stuff go away. If, if you come in at the neighborhood level, it's not one person trying to get a loan. It's a group of people. And all of a sudden yeah. that balances out yeah. so it makes it easier because they have more negotiation power. I, mm. yeah. I believe they yeah. specifically tried to uh, eradicate all the rules that are currently on the federal level enabling red lines to still exist. Mm. But uh, it, it, it's a, wanting to do it is vastly different than getting it done. Right. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, definitely but there's public some... public transportation, <laughs> which is another mirage, always on the horizon, but it never arrives. Or like those bridges and whatnot that have been trying to repair for 60 years. Oh, yes, mm. yes. Mm. So, yeah. So yeah. that's an intro. Uh, so what's what's most useful to to do in the sessions? When? Oh, what's uh, most useful? Well, well what's more useful? Because I was actually I was thinking. Okay, so after, uh, let's try to keep the the work day to like five thirty and then or five and then do this like maybe for an hour, mm -hmm. like daily. Uh, see if it leads anywhere. If if um, we make any progress on any substance. Um, I don't know, Lance. Did you have any thoughts on that pro that or anything, or uh, I don't know how to make this because you're going to be here for a long time. There's going to be a few of us who are here a long time, so I wanted especially the people who, who sign up for that to to be in on it. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts on your funding model? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fund myself. Okay. It's a business, right? which means you need clients. If there's only one client, it's not a business. So we didn't talk about lead generation right. or understanding who this demographic is. I still don't know who gets a thousand square foot house. Right. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah, the yeah, first yeah, thing to question. talk about is uh, who exactly is this target market that we're I after? And do we have a yeah, I clarity you, on that? I can tell you about the average American consumer, uh, average house price during no, a 33. Because oh. we went all over the world. So you just want to talk about the U.S. or like one market specifically in the know. U.S.? Okay, okay, that's fair. Yeah. I think the, the, the question is like which um, topic should we talk about in, you know, like in okay. this? I mean, I mean, let's say the, the product has a market. Let's assume that. Mm -hmm. then even the way you sell it would be different if there's different kinds of plants that want that kind of house. Yeah. yeah. Right. Maybe the neighborhood matters. Maybe the there's so many other things. Yeah. Yeah. It's in. It's incre It's not localized. It's hyper localized. Yeah. Right. Housing. I, I guess my only comment is just that you know we don't have to make these sessions in this, right? Like so we can uh, pretty good starting points mm -hmm. and uh, generate a few topics that people are interested in doing a deeper dive on and then put those in the future sessions. Yeah, I, and if you guys want, I can just give you a, a general rundown, and then you guys can, uh, you know, hit some things back at me too for things. Yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's one of the things. That I would if you guys want to know, like, what I'm thinking about with yeah, the actual uh, business. I'm pretty sure everybody here, uh, here, kind of have an idea of, of what they want to do. So maybe like explore it and give all the feedback possible, mm -hmm. and kind of get forward into their own businesses and kind of so we all can realize that we can do it. That it's, it's viable and uh, it's not like doing the house. But I, I think about I think about your question a lot, the market the market itself and how do I reach them? How do I? You know, how so I will always propose a, a, an angle for next session. I don't know, tomorrow let's say, what if you present your idea, okay. and getting feedback, okay. and then if you can frame the specific kind of feedback you would want. Then you can prime us during the day. So okay, I think about this, this, and this angle. So then we, over the course of a week, we explore seven different ideas, seven different markets, seven different designs. In my opinion, I think we should like get first into the CD bubble, and like we all can like really get into those topics that we have in mind, and then we can jump into each one of. No, but this is not a product conversation. This is a business conversation. It requires a market. I know, yeah, yeah, for sure, no, but it's the market of the CD for home, which mm -hmm. is different. That's, than that's the fair. Do you not that's know fair. the market in Montreal as far as housing goes? Oh, I don't, I don't plan to own a house ever. It's not in my conception of living a good life. Okay. So I don't really care about anything that we discussed tonight <laughs> yeah, at oh, this okay. level. But I like 
or everything else. You like the work of what's going down, and you just want to, yeah, okay. Yeah, the general trend, general idea. Like, I don't, I don't share your belief system. That, but that's anybody, good. That's good. We need everybody. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a good point. Anybody else here hasn't looked into like demographics of housing and whatnot? Yeah, I guess not, but I, I want to, I want a house, and I want to live in a house, and mm-hmm. I want to die in that house. But I, I do believe that there is a, like a solving problem kind of mentality here, mm-hmm. and I think uh, I don't know. Maybe you're not interested in that. Like, uh, He's here with us. Giving no, no, yeah, sure. Like uh, giving solutions to how how to solve house. I think that's that's the, the core issue here. I don't I don't think that it's more no because even if somebody who rents right mm-hmm. that still get affected by the giant exponential yeah. increase. In you and and I plan on building houses to rent out as well as capital streams as well, which is it. I, there are things that are within our um, romantic ideals about open source, and there's the real capital markets that actually run the United States that we have to compete against that we'll have to. We're, we're, we're trying to balance those things, the love and, and, and spreading of this message while still, you know, getting actually down to the brass tacks of making money, you know, because uh, if people see our houses making money, it will do the work itself. If people see a great product, it will do the work itself, but it's all about the product. It has to be the focus. So if it, if it has to be about the seed eco home and how I, I'm going to relate that and use it as a um, kind of a springboard, then I, I'll focus on the seed eco home and my yeah, vision for it. Yeah. All right. So let's do it. So tomorrow let's do it 530. All right. So okay. keep it. Um, yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, there you are. I took notes on the yeah, share link. That's awesome.